Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our first uh, live stream here from the Structure Office. My name is Axel Morgner and this is Lukas, um, software developer in our company. And together we'd like to introduce you to our software. Um, we have prepared um, a small demo. We want to uh, give you an overview of the most important functions and then hopefully uh, answer some questions um, which you can uh, enter into the chat. Um, and of course, also, uh, if the time allows, um, answer or, or demo you uh, some features you're uh, most curious about or um, yeah, you want to have uh, demonstrated. So our setup here is that we have a running structure instance here and we can um, switch over to the browser so you can only um, uh, listen to our voices and see the, uh, the browser and uh, also have our video screen a stream in the upper right corner so that we can still um, talk to you um, kind of in person and you also see our uh, movements and things we're doing in the in the uh, software so yeah please um, you can start right away entering questions if you're interested in uh, specific topics um, um, Lucas will uh, follow your questions in the chat and from time to time interrupt me or after the first block um, uh, we'll uh, read the comments or questions and then try and we both try to answer these um, in real time. Okay, so let's go switch to the browser. And um, this is a fresh copy of structure, fresh, freshly installed um, instance. And the first thing, of course, obviously you do is logging in. We log in with the default credentials, admin, admin. And um, then we land on the dashboard page. The dashboard page is an overview page which shows some uh, useful information. For example, uh, about your user ID, the session ID, some um, licensing information, and later on, if you um, plan to um, uh, export or import your application, you have a shortcut to um, these functionali this functionality. Yeah, um, structure is, um, a tool which a web-based platform which has I would say um, four major building blocks um, regarding the user interface the first one is the pages builder tool or pages tool um, it's reachable via this pages um, menu entry here and uh, if you enter this area for the first time it's uh, completely empty and this is the place where you can build web applications. Uh, web applications uh, are constructed out of pages and pages are linked together, uh, have typically a menu structure or menu elements um, and um, you can make them interactive and or dynamic. So you want to um, display content from your database uh, uh, on these pages. And this is uh, what we are trying to do today. Create a simple page, create a data model where we can uh, then later on use that data model to enter custom data and then uh, display this data on the dynamic page. So first of all, we start creating a simple page just by clicking on this uh, green icon here. And this will create a, a very simple, a very simple page. In fact, it's the, I think that's the, the, the most minimal um, a set of elements uh, an HTML page can have. And um, this page structure, the, um, the page tree or the tree of elements of this page is shown in this area on the left. Um, we call these uh, areas slide outs because they slide in and out and you can also um, change the width of these slide outs and there are also slide outs on the right 
Um, here are some widgets. Widgets are predefined elements you can uh, use to uh, create uh, rich pages and um, yeah, some predefined elements you can just by drag and drop add to the page. You can uh, add HTML elements. So this is the, the whole set of the um, HTML5 set of uh, elements. Uh, you can either drag and drop them from here to uh, the tree, the page tree, and then they uh, will be uh, appended to the uh, element you've dropped them onto. Or you can use a um, uh, right-click mouse menu here or context menu to uh, also add um, HTML elements like um, um, a paragraph element and you can add a content element. This is mostly used for text um, to this paragraph element. And then there are some more sophisticated elements um, to um, define reuse components. Uh, that means that um, elements on the page which are contained on multiple pages because they are um, uh, repeatedly, they will be, they are used repeatedly in your web application, um, can be defined as shared components. This is an area which is uh, empty here, um, but you can easily create a shared component by dragging an element over to the right. And this is the most important or the most used metaphor in, in the UI metaphor in, in the structure page builder, creating elements by dragging and dropping them from one area to the other. If you want to delete an element, you can just remove that from the page tree and um, there's no, um, no, no dialogue asking, are you sure? Uh, because um, we have something like a, a trash, uh, we call it unused elements. That's the, uh, the, uh, the last slide on, on, the left, uh, on the right hand side. Uh, you can also just drag it back to your page tree um, if you just remove that um, in error. Okay, so now we'll close that here. We have a simple page here on the left with some elements. Um, of course, looking kind of ugly. There are, there are better ways to, um, uh, if you are like uh, a little bit more used to working with structure, you can, you can uh, create uh, uh, very beautiful pages by just importing a complete template. Um, we can demo that um, in a minute. But let me first show you some of the most important functions here in this page builder. Uh, you can rearrange or change the order of elements by just um, drag and drop. Um, just drag an element and drop it um, anywhere else in the tree. That also works um, for copying uh, elements between pages. So if you have a second page, um, then you can just drag and drop an element from one page to the other. Um, if you're moving an element or you're dragging and dropping an element um, within one page, it will be moved. And if you uh, drop that element on, an, on another page or a different page, it gets cloned. You can also clone elements by just clicking on this small clone icon. This is a very helpful and, and very handy functionality uh, in, in, um, in this page builder tool because that allows you to quickly uh, repeat elements which are similar. Um, to change text here, you have uh, mostly two options. You can either uh, open an editor. This is, this is a simple text editor which allows you to yeah, create whatever text you like. Um, you can save that um, in the background. You can, you can see uh, that there was a green um, status, um, status window or status message and a, a green blink uh, blinking. So if an element blinks green in structure, that means that uh, the information was sent to the backend, stored and um, successfully stored. And if it's green, then you know that everything was okay. Um, and uh, you can go on working. So here you can enter text. Um, text could can, all, can also be, uh, can be of different types. So we have 
can enter plain text. You can enter here uh, HTML or even CSS or Markdown uh, textile. So there's support for a couple of um, rich text formats, which will, when rendered uh, to the user in the browser, will be uh, automatically uh, transformed to HTML for the output. Um, that's one option. And another option is to use in-page editing. So you can just click on any text element here. You can see it is uh, highlighted in, in yellow. Um, and then just modify the text here. And um, the user interface is very um, responsive um, so that whenever you click somewhere outside the element you just edit it, it gets stored. And you also maybe saw the green blinking here on the page name. That means that, sorry, that the page itself was updated. So um, any element is connected to each other, to its parent. And of course, the, the, the root element of a page is the page element itself. Um, that's very handy if you um, think about caching. Uh, pages can be cached. Um, for uh, a couple of seconds, uh, yeah, or just uh, forever until a change uh, takes place in the pages tree. And because we have a graph database underneath, um, the change will just um, propagate to the root element. So this is uh, why this page has gotten a new uh, version number. So we are at version 10. Um, here in this page because I just made 10 uh, basic changes to the page and each time this version uh, is uh, increased um, the backend the st structure server sends a signal to the browser to uh, fetch a new version and not reuse the uh, cached content um, in the browser cache so just just a side note um, yeah this is basically uh, static content management. Um, that's a handy tool to create um, your, like your page frame, but um, now you want to add dynamic content. And dynamic content typically comes from a database. So as you hopefully uh, might know, Structure uses graph technology, uses a Neo4j database um, as the backend. Everything is stored in this Neo4j database. Um, and to serve content, dynamic content from a database, you need some kind of data binding and you need a data model where, which defines the, the data structure of your custom data. And that's uh, what we call a schema. Um, and uh, just, I just jumped to the second, um, also very important uh, functional area in structure. This is the schema. Um, also, it's empty in the beginning if you have an, an, a clean installation. Um, it, it, it's not exactly true that it's empty. So um, I just uh, prepared the demo and, and hid some elements which are uh, already there you I can I can scroll down and then you see lots of um, nodes and relationships here so these nodes and relationships define the built-in um, data model which is used to um, create the functionality of structures backend itself you can you can um, even modify this you can at runtime modify um, the, the data model of structure itself. It's only recommended to, I would say, to advanced users. Uh, so we stick today, we stick to uh, creating a new custom data model here. Um, and typically in, in, in initial or in intro demos, I use a very simple use case everyone should know or, or um, knows about. That's project management in a very simple, in a very simple um, uh, manner. So for project man management, if you want to store information about your projects and project members and maybe clients, you need, of course, projects. To store projects, we create a new type called project or named project. Um, 
I just entered the word project here and uh, I can uh, hit enter or click on the add button. And now it takes a couple of seconds to recompile the schema. So typically um, on this machine, it takes about um, a couple of seconds, two or three seconds. Not as long as it just took here because we, on the laptop here, we have the uh, streaming software running. So it took a little longer than it usually does. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's true. My, my laptop is quite hot and it's running, uh, yeah, it's running the streaming software here uh, on the, on the lap laptop. That's, that's correct. So, um, and also it was a fresh, freshly started instance. And that means that the cache is cold, the database cache and the, the, the object level cache or object cache in structure is cold. That means it's not populated with data from the database. So hopefully the, the next, um, action will take a little bit um, less time so what do we else we have project and we need clients of course typically uh, you have a client for uh, your project um, now i enter client and hit enter and a couple of seconds later the schema is recompiled what does it mean the schema is recompiled um that means that uh, when I enter a name and click enter uh, um, and click add um, a new node in the graph database defining the type project or client is created. Um, one of the, I think, most important things in, in structure in our software is that um, this schema definition, this data model, uh, this definition is stored as a graph in a graph database in Neo4j. And um, whenever we mo uh, modify this schema, we create code, we generate code from that data model, from that schema definition. And this code is compiled um, at runtime and kind of injected into the running system um, or added to the running system. So that means that if you made a change to this data model, uh, you can instantly use that new type in the entire system so wherever you uh, go we will maybe see later the the web service is the restful backend you can um, instantly see that a new web service resource is created for that type and you can start entering data you don't have to uh, write code uh, compile it and deploy it to a server um, to, to, to use it. So that's a very um, effective way to create a dynamic, da uh, dynamic data model and um, to configure your database for your, your, the purposes of your project. So um, I can rearrange, of course, these nodes. Um, and I think one of the also most Im important things here is that we can define the relation um, the possible interactions between these two types, project and client, by just dragging and dropping or dragging a, a, an arrow between these two types. Again, it takes a couple of seconds to be recompiled and validated against the existing uh, data model. But after it has um, uh, recompiled the schema, you see uh, an established connection between these two types. Now I only have to configure this relationship, which defines the relation. I have to set a um, relationship type between these um, two elements or two uh, uh, types. In this case, typically um, a project has a client. I mean, you can, that's, that's just up to you to define the semantics of this relation, uh, this relationship. Um, in this demo, I just enter has. Um, here, these two boxes or select uh, menus define the cardinality of this database relation. So if you, uh, uh, an artificial case would be that one project has access exactly one client and one client has always only one project so then you would enter one to one then it would be a one to one relationship between project and client of course that's not true in the in the real world typically 
um, a project maybe has one client yes but the client can have multiple projects so um, we set it to many to one so this is the a many to one connection between project and client we save the changes and a couple of seconds later uh, we have an established um, or uh, yeah established a um, triple of two types or classes and one relationship between these two um, and now the interesting part here is that's that that's that was all you have to do to start using your database with this custom data model um, you could either go to the data section which is kind of a an integrated data um, editor for uh, for any kind of built-in or custom classes um, or you could just use that in the query but let's first see uh, what we have here in terms of these two new types. So we enter project um, and um, we see a, an empty table, of course. Here are some, some existing attributes bec because um, each custom class also inherits from existing built-in types. That, um, that is kind of the connection to, to the foundation. So you don't have to pro not program configure all these elements or all these attributes by yourself um, but structure brings a set of um, very useful attributes and your new class uh, classes or types just inherit them so you can start with them so one a very handy attribute for example is name typically things in databases have names and also project have names. So we start creating a, a project and let's call it project A and uh, project B and let's see. Okay. Um, I don't know why this wasn't saved. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Nothing to see. Okay uh let's see if we can help that by flushing the caches uh no okay something rank went wrong so this is a live demo as always uh things can go wrong shouldn't happen but um let's see okay going back to the schema um what i wanted to show is that um both types have um uh, a couple of inherited attributes these are the attributes you just you just saw and of course i can add um, new attributes uh, new custom attributes like for example a project id um, i can set a couple of types here for example project id typically is a string field i can uh, set a couple of uh, additional options like for example if this is an um, mandatory attribute should always be not null not empty um, it should be unique uh, everything which is an id should uh, definitely be a unique attribute um, and should it be indexed so can you use that in a search query okay um, i just skip these options for now um, again schema recompile takes a couple of seconds and after that, um, I have a new field here, um, which is called project ID. Um, back to the schema, uh, which uh, one thing that's also very interesting is that once you create a relationship between two types, uh, you get something we call a remote attribute. Maybe it's not the, the best name for that. We, we had some suggestions how to rename that um, if, if you you're seeing this um, in the live demo or uh, later on um, if you have because we are not Eng English native speakers sometimes it's difficult to find the the exact right word for what you want to express or what it is in the software so our um, our understanding here is that if we create a connection between the project and the client then there's an automatically uh, there's there's a new attribute created uh, which kind of points to elements of the other type 
um, and the name is automatically created by just um, uh, using the relationship type and the target um, uh, node type or target object type. So it's in a relationship project has client. So the, the attribute is has client. And um, if we go to, or if, if we would um, um, consume an object in our application, consume an object of the type project, then we see it has a, uh, an, an object attribute has client. Um, and if we configure a relationship between, uh, we, we create uh, two objects and, and connect them in the, our database, we see client object, uh, client object in that project. And on the other, side on the client side we have a remote uh, ob uh, remote uh, attribute called um, project has that kind of makes no sense so we rename that to just projects so clicking here just um, triggers the schema reload and after a couple of seconds we have created this um, remote attributes. So maybe this is an, uh, a good place or good time to uh, try to go to the um, uh, REST, RESTful interface. So what I just mentioned that we just created a, um, a database backend um, for projects and clients. Uh, can also be seen in in the web uh, in the web service um, for each of these types. You can see it here in the header. Um, there exists a um, RESTful resource, and you can uh, consume like with an HTTP request. You can consume the the data as a JSON object or JSON document um, in your client application. And that's also what structure internally does when we connect the front end part to the back end. Um, and here also we have different, we call it views. So in, in the custom view, for example, are our custom or newly created um, attributes. And there's also a, um, an all view, which, ex uh, which contains all of the attributes of this um, project. So, here we see uh, the project A and the project, uh, pro only the project A and the project, sorry, the project B uh, I just created and the project A uh, does not show up. So maybe I clicked somewhere in the wrong place, but you can also see um, an owner and um, grantees and so on. So a lot of um, system attributes, um, but you only see the, these in this all view. Um, a view here in this context is a set of attributes you can use to configure what uh, is sent to the client uh, for a specific request. Um, this here is, um, of course, a, a web page, but it's just an HTML version of uh, the JSON, which you typically get from, from the server. Right. Although I think it's important to mention that you not only can retrieve data via this RESTful interface, but you can also um, post data to it. So you can create data and manipulate data via this interface. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this RESTful server um, supports the full HTTP set of uh, or set of HTTP verbs like, um, of course, get, post to create new objects, put to um, change uh, data in the database. Um, delete. Delete, to delete something, of course. Um, and I patch. think patch is new in this, uh, in the version 3.0. So to only send the kind of, kind of a, only change what's, what has been sent um, to, to the server. So you, for example, for, if you want to update a collection um, in your uh, in your database, you can only send um, the element you want to add to this um, collection. Um, yeah, let's go back to our our database here, and um, 
I really wonder why the name column is empty. So, but we will figure out. We will. We, we always de demo on the newest, on the latest uh, um, snapshot version uh, because, yeah, no, no risk, no fun in these demos. And sometimes things like that happen. Um, now let's go back to the pages because uh, I don't want to make that too long, and we will have uh, dedicated. Um, videos and tutorials and also maybe live streams about specific areas of the structure software on the user face uh, user interface um, in particular and one will definitely uh, definitely cover the schema and the back end the rest for resources uh, everything you can do with that um, yeah in 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 detail i just want to try uh, just want to try to create a dynamic page here um, so let me just remove uh, the kind of uh, test elements i just created in the first step and show you one important step so when i want to create a project list for example and i just have to define a query and a repeater in a repeater in I would say it's it's a common term for elements in the user interface which are repeated uh, multiple times and 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 are kind of um, the list elements of uh, the, for the results of a database query. So you you're doing a database query, you get a couple of um, elements or objects back in in a list, in a result list, and the repeater is the the element which displays or transforms the data into uh, a list of um, visual elements on the page. So we have um, traditionally we have four different kinds of queries and with the new version 3.0 we have a fifth one which we are very proud of. Um, but let's first go maybe to the most simple query type it's a REST query. This is exactly what we would enter into the URL um, of our browser to connect to the backend, to the RESTful JSON backend, which uh, um, we just saw in an HTML version. So for example, here I enter just the name project, save it, and this would just retrieve the list of projects from the backend. Now to reference, um, single objects from this result set or each object in this result set um, we have to um, to bind that to a kind of uh, reference key and we call it data key so in this this um, case just simply we call it P or let's call it project then it's simply simpler to or easier to to memorize so now I just created a um, simple repeater configuration for this uh, block element here. It's a diff HTML element. But it's, so first thing we see here is we have two elements in the, on the page, on the displaying page, but they still um, read hello world. That is caused um, by the static text in this repeater content element. So there are two projects. Yeah, linking to the project. Exactly. It already shows that there are two projects in the database. And um, now I can just here enter um, a kind of template expression. A template expression is just in most other web frameworks is just a um, kind of placeholder, which will dynamically replace by the real value from the database. Uh, here we reference the project from the projects list by the keyword or data key project uh, dot and now we choose the name hopefully it will render here okay <laughs> just just one so it's just the name of project a uh, is still empty um, and that's it I mean that's a dynamic page created from a custom data model and if we now go to um, the project section here and create more projects. Now I have created a third and, and a fourth project. We see here the list um, contains four elements. Um, 
Then you can just change the name to ID, so the internal structure ID is rendered. And yeah, that's 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 a good idea. Uh, let's use the ID, and now we see um, it's a it's a different attribute. Um, it's the ID of um, yeah the object in the database. That's also one um, I think very handy um, um, thing in, in in structures. So each element which is created gets automatically gets an uh, a UUID. It's a unique universal uh, identifier. Um, it's I think a type four UUID, mm -hmm. which is um, is said to be really universal and unique. So conflicts uh, having the same UUID in the same in, in one system is is a very 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 rare um, uh, thing and and should never happen. So it's uh, I think seen as an error if you have a <laughs> <laughs> you have the same. It's, it's probably an error if you have uh, the same UUID in your system twice. Um, okay, I mean, that's, um, I think, a rough walkthrough. Um, the uh, two or three of the important things in structure are the most basic, but also important things in structure. Just to mention it, uh, I just want to go to um, a couple of other sections and then close with our new um, feature, the flow engine in the flow editor. But just first, let me show you uh, three uh, additional areas. One is the files area. Structure has the structure is based on a graph database and um, file systems and file hierarchies are also graphs um, because every tree is a graph, a special graph, but and, and very um, handy graph because trees are very practical data structures. Um, people or humans can understand and work with trees very well. And so it's no wonder that um, file systems are, and the whole file system, file system tree metaphor is very common in the, in the uh, computer science and also in uh, applications. So because it's, very practical to store things as a file stored in or persisted in a file hierarchy. We decided to create a virt virtual file system in the graph database. And just by clicking on uh, add folder, I can create this uh, folder hierarchy. I can simply uh, rename these um, folders also see again see the the green blinking oh, let's drag and drop um, and i can also create uh, files just by create add uh, click on uh, um, add file that just creates empty file objects in the database uh, there is a, a text editor which you can use to edit your uh, file content um, you can also set uh, different content types. If you upload a file to structure, you can just do it by drag and drop onto the main area. So if you have uh, a Word document, an Excel file, a PDF or whatever, structure automatically um, detects the file type, sets the content type right. Um, and there are really a bunch of other functionality Function, uh, functions connected to this file, uh, um, file virtual file repository. Um, it's important to understand that the whole metadata is stored in the graph database with all its benefits. All the benefits of the graph platform then applies to your metadata of your folders and your files. You can create custom folder types with custom metadata. You can create, of course, custom file types with custom metadata. Um, you can, um, yeah, and the binary data, so the content of an image or PDF document and so on, is stored in the file system because um, of the operating system. Of, yeah, of the of the of the server this instance is running on, but of course it could be a virtual file system yeah. uh, somewhere else or. But on a, on a kind of physical file system and only the metadata is 
um, managed in the graph database, um, which um, yeah brings you also uh, lots of benefits. All the benefits of a graph database here apply to your file storage or your doc. You can create a document management. In fact, structure is kind of a document management system uh, integrated here, um, and there are some connected there's, there's some connected functionality like for example you can um, if you have an existing file storage somewhere in your company or on, on your server uh, you can set up structure in the way that this existing uh, file system is just um, read or parsed and only the metadata will be created in the database and structure has or structure will uh, store references to your files in your existing um, file system and can also monitor changes so whenever someone changes something in this existing file system and the metadata in structure and in in, in the so by that uh, also in the neo4j database will be automatically updated. So this is a very, very uh, useful feature. Or we have a file-based CSV import. You can upload a CSV file with thousands or hundreds of thousands of lines and then use an, a, a, a scheduled importer to, to read this file and import data from the CSV file into structure. Um, so that saves you the time uh, to create all the data manually. Uh, it's very common case that people um, have their data in CSV files and want to import them into a new database system. Um, there is um, um, there's an image management and also or let's say media asset management system integrated. You can upload images. Uh, the system automatically creates thumbnails in uh, standard or custom uh, sizes you can upload videos. There's a transcoding uh, functionality in structure in the, I, th I think it's called in the media module um, to transcode videos from, from one video type into the other. Uh, same goes for um, images. You can set up structure to just uh, create uh, um, different image types like JPEG, GIF, PNG and so on. So a lot of functionality in this area. Um, it would uh, be, I think, beyond the scope of this intro demo tutorial or demo uh, to show you all of these features in the file area. Um, very important thing also is security. Um, just a short uh, walk through the security systems or the security system with different security levels. You can uh, create groups and users and add users to groups and also use um, add groups to groups so you can build a group hierarchy. Uh, that way you can just um, manage this, the different security levels. And for each object in structure, no matter if it's a built-in system, uh, bu built-in object or the built-in type, or it's a, um, an element of your, your page tree or a page itself or a file or a folder or a project or a client, uh, everywhere you can, uh, you see the, this uh, yellow icon and that gives you access to the access control and visibility dialog. And here you can reference these groups um, and assign um, rights, access, access grants. Access gr we call it access grants or permissions. So you have read, write, delete, and also access control. So you can delegate uh, the ability to change the access control settings to a different group. Um, there are two. Um, main or two, yeah, I would say basic uh, um, visibility or access control settings. You can make something public, so there's no check at all. Um, so so no, no permission check at all, which speed, speeds up things a little bit. 
and you can um, define that an object is uh, visible to authenticated users. So this is th these are two um, very simple uh, access control levels, which uh, turned out to be very handy in most projects. Um, yeah, that said, going back to the security um, area, of course, uh, for each user, you can set, um, you can change the pass password. Passwords are stored as um, password hash. It's a salted SHA-512 um, hash in the database, so no storage of clear text passwords. Um, new in the version three are um, a couple of options to um, define password policies, like for example, uh, how uh, how long should the password or has the password to be, how often do you have to change it, and so on. How many attempts to log in do you have, and so on. You can, um, yeah, also new is the two-factor authentication. It's an optional setting uh, which can be um, set uh, for the whole system or for each user to define if a user has to use yeah, two-factor authentication. Um, you, can, you can store a, a public key. So for password, let, uh, password um, uh, how's it called? Logging in without passwords. Um, yeah, very simple, uh, based on, on SH, SH, SSH um, in this case, yeah. So users and groups can be configured in, in, in um, a wide range or with a wide range of options. Um, and now, if you remember from the beginning, these REST resources or RESTful um, uh, web services for each for each type we created or which was already existing, there was a, um, a REST endpoint where you could consume data from. And to secure these REST endpoints, you can define the allowed um, HTTP verbs for uh, either non-authenticated or public users and authenticated users. Uh, and this is what's behind this, what we call resource access grants. Uh, there is a signature for each path uh, of a RESTful resource. It's kind of normalized um, uh, path here. And in this matrix, you can allow, for example, access to the article resource for authenticated users by just clicking on, um, on this, or just ticking this checkbox. Um, and so on, or just you can allow get, put, and post for on the address resource for non-authenticated users. Um, if you're working with structure and you see a um, an error, I think it's a 401 error um, in the log, you will typically see that there was an unauthenticated uh, or not. The, the access to this or that resource was not allowed, then this is the place you have to go and tick the boxes to um, yeah, at this specific signature, which is also mentioned in the log, and then um, redo the, the HTTP request and you will um, hopefully, um, you can hopefully do this request successfully. Yeah, this is the security section. There is um, one, other thing in our security system, which is uh, related to the schema, you can set, um, um, you can define permissions based on the relations between types in the graph. I think this is something we will cover in, in a schema special, so to say, um, and skip it for now. Okay, now just to um, just to mention a couple of other modules and structure here's a here's just a list it's a, the they are hidden in the menu the dashboard we already saw the graph uh, is kind of visualization of the graph data itself contents is a content management system for textual content um, for editors uh, code is um, a very simple very small 
integrated development environment. No, I don't think you can call it IDE right now. Maybe not yet. It, not yet. It will maybe develop into an IDE, integrated IDE. Right now, it's only a code editor with a hierarchical tree on the left. You can you can show it here. So you have you have types, uh, and the types can have uh, methods and. We're on the way to creating kind of an integrated development environment. Flows we will see in a minute. Um, importer is um, a simple user interface to, um, to monitor start, stop, schedule imports. Uh, the crawler is kind of a web crawler which can be set up to, to, um, to read out web pages and um, based on simple patterns, um, uh, read the data, parse the page elements or the, the HTML structure and create data in, in structure from it. <coughs> Localization is used to um, add um, translations of, um, um, I'd say, yeah, multi-language elements for the user interface. Virtual types is a um, it's kind of uh, it's it's part of the API builder um, module and it's used to map um, different data sources to the internal data model in structure. So a, a virtual type looks like an internal type, but it's not. Um, uh, or if you create objects uh, of a virtual type. They are not created as database objects directly, but there is a um, the the option to process the data um, and, um, for example, merge two types into one or split up one type into two types of the, in the database and transform the values of your your um, yeah the, the values of your data you're sending to this virtual type API to transform that. You can define a transformation function. Um, and so it's kind of um, a tooling you need to create a really powerful middleware. That's also, I think, um, a lot of stuff to show there and, and uh, should uh, find the place in its own um, video. Mail templates is used to configure, uh, yeah, as the name says, mail templates. When you want to send out email notifications directly from the system, uh, you can create a template and fill it with the same um, template expressions as your website. Very handy. Uh, this is also uh, a real-world application, also something each real-world application needs at some point. Okay, then only the only thing left is the flow engine here. And this is the latest and, and greatest addition to structure. Um, we always thought that um, bringing um, dynamic behavior to uh, a very integrated platform like this uh, should be as easy as possible or as simple as possible and, and um, should not require too much programming skills. And this is one of our visions we have with structure that we want to enable people to create applications to create web applications without restrictions in the degree of freedom with no or only very simple or very basic programming skills um, in i think it was in version 2.0 uh, we um, uh, we created the possibility to add code methods to the schema. So that, that, that means that if you create an object, uh, a, a certain code was um, was uh, executed. But that what would require programming skills, even for a simple um, programming um, uh, or simple scripts, you need some programming skills. Now the flow editor changes uh, changes that. A flow editor is a visual programming um, just integrated into our platform. To show that, I just create a simple flow, call it test. And now we have an empty canvas here. And I can now create 
um, flow nodes. Uh, flow node is um, an element, either an action or a data source or a logic node, um, which can be connected to other nodes. And let's start with the um, most simple thing is, is a return node. The return node um, is just meant to return data. Uh, because each flow can be started, does something, and returns a result. It does not have to return a result, but it makes sense. Most, most of them return results. And now let's um, add a type query as a data source. So going back to our projects. And now I connect the data target um, endpoint or connector to the data source connector of the return node and then click if I click on run the query will be executed and it's the same as um, in our example uh, from a couple of minutes before and typing in project into the URL uh, to get a list of projects uh, we can now filter for example by name if the name contains um, B, then we should only get one project. That's the project B and so on. So this is a very simple way to define queries, but not only queries. You can um, add filters. Uh, where is it? Um, ah, here, uh, a filter node. A filter node can also be connected to a data source and has a data target, uh, which can then be connected to um, like this, to a return node or some node which will then uh, go on processing the data. And here you can, um, you can connect a filter condition. It's like the filter function in most programming languages, but on the, in, in a visual way. So you connect a um, for example, a um, um, logic node which returns or evaluates something and returns true or false for each of these elements which are uh, fed into that data source connector. Um, and um, yeah, and if this condition returns true, then this node will be uh, contained in the result or not if it uh, returns false. So this is just a very simple example uh, for how you can create logic elements or define queries with a flow. Uh, we will do a full demo, um, maybe also a live stream with this, um, with this flow editor and this flow engine. It's um, new in version 3.0 and um, yeah, was very well received. received from our existing customers and we we get a lot of um, questions about that and interest people want to use that so we will definitely uh, dive in a lot deeper than today okay that was that was an overview of um, the structure platform with some I think more specific and more um, um, more in-depth um, uh, material here. Now let's look if we have some questions from the audience. Sadly, no. Um, I think... Uh, no questions? No questions, no. Not even from the team. <laughs> Okay, I mean, it was a very small audience. Um, this is just a test, it's an experiment. It's the first time we're doing a live demo. So um, if there are no questions, then everyone understood, hopefully every, everything we said, um, then yeah, it's, I think then We'll schedule another demo or do some more videos to demonstrate more um, specific features. Um, if you want us to um, show you something in structure you're interested in, or if you are interested in specific use cases, 
like what exactly can you do with structure and why should I should I use structure then please let us know write us an email um, or go to our website uh, use the contact form here get in touch with us um, you can request request a demo um, this is our colleague Ines uh, she will she's, she will be happy if you send her a request for a demo or send her questions and um, she and the team will happily answer all the questions um, if you want to yeah give us feedback on this live demonstration on structure in general um, please use the comment section here on YouTube um, you can um, also of course subscribe our channel uh, we are still at the very beginning of course um, as you saw just uh, in the um, last few minutes but we'll try to constantly improve um, what we present and maybe how we present um, yeah drop us a line drop us leave us comments here and um, um, yeah that's all I have to say yeah okay. subscribe to the YouTube channel of course uh, to see if we have some new tutorials coming um, and yeah I think you said everything hope so <laughs> okay so um, bye to everyone take care have a nice day See you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.